Science is the best tool ever devised for understanding how the world works. People always have problems to solve. Throughout history, people have tried to devise ways of explaining the world around them. Did your local volcano explode and destroy your village? <sighs> the volcano gods must be angry. Once a year, you must sacrifice a young person from the rebuilt village by throwing them into the lava to appease the gods. Did the volcano explode again? Aww, they must have been displeased at the village's choice of sacrifice. It's called confirmation bias, the tendency to make associations based on coincidence and usually false preconceptions of how things work and base future decisions on it. It has no explanatory power, it has no real predictive power, and therefore fails utterly as a tool for understanding how the world works. The Greek philosopher Aristotle first wrote down the importance of making measurements in an attempt to understand our world. The scientific method evolved around the idea that in order to understand the world we live in, we need to develop models. These are representations, either physical or mathematical, that can be used to make predictions. These models are constantly tested to see if they stand up to every possible scenario. Those that stand the rigors of peer review are considered to be theories. This is a word that has gotten some very bad press, so I will attempt to explain the scientific process that leads to a theory. 1. An observation is repeatedly made regarding some phenomena. For example, it is noted that during physical and chemical changes, the mass of the stuff you start with always equals the mass of the stuff you end up with. We call such an observable fact a law. In this case, it's the law of conservation of mass, or matter. A law explains nothing. It's just an observable fact. Gravity is another law. We know that gravity exists. What we don't fully understand yet is what gravity really is, or how it happens. Sometimes, instead of calling our observed fact a law, we call it a problem. One example of this is a car that won't start. It's easily observed by all that the car doesn't start. The scientific method can then be applied to figuring out why the car won't start. In medicine, this is known as diagnosis. 2. Attempts are made to understand the underlying causes of the law or problem. This requires research of the scientific literature to see what has been done before in pursuit of this issue. This will lead to a hypothesis, which is a testable statement intended to lead to an experiment. A hypothesis states, if we do this, then this should be the result because, uh, insert information gleaned from research here. This leads to the idea of testable variables. If you change one variable, called the independent variable, it will lead to a change in the other variable, the dependent variable. Every other possible variable that could also lead to a change in the dependent variable must be held constant. We call this the control, so that the cause and effect of the tested variable can be isolated and demonstrated. Three. An experiment is designed around the two variables to be tested and is designed to hold all other possible variables constant as a control. In order to make the experiment meaningful, measurements must be taken. These measurements are often referred to as data and are usually arranged in the form of a data table to keep it organized and easy to read. These measurements must use a measuring system, like the metric system, and include appropriate units to give the measurements meaning. The measurements must be as precise as possible, measured to as small a decimal place as possible in order to get the best possible results. Scientists spend a huge amount of money on getting the most precise instruments possible. For example, the centigram balances used in a typical high school chemistry lab cost about $150, and they measure to the thousandths of a gram. If you want to get just one more place, the ten thousandths, you will need to buy an analytical balance. This will cost you at least $3,000, more than 10 times the cost to get just one more decimal place. That's 20 times the cost to get just one more decimal place. But when you're dealing with measurements that could mean the difference between life and death, it pays to get it right the first time. The data is organized into graphs that can be used to analyze the data. This can show if there is a direct relationship between the variables, as one goes up, the other goes up too, 
an inverse relationship, whereas one goes up, the other goes down, or whether there is no relationship at all, as one goes up, the other either doesn't change or changes randomly. The shape of the line or curve of the graph is then fitted to a mathematical equation. Let's take something simple. In the case of a direct linear relationship, such as the hotter your beverage is, the faster your sugar dissolves into it, the formula is one for a line, y equals mx plus b, where m is the slope of the line and b is where the line intersects the y-axis. If the y-intercept is always demonstrated to be zero, then the equation can simply be y equals mx. There are many different mathematical functions that these graphs take, from parabolic to logarithmic. The math equations can be used to make predictions. 5. Conclusion A falsifiable statement that explains the relationship between the variables that can be used to make predictions. The word falsifiable means that it is subject to being tested and possibly being proved false. Another scientist might use the equation to make a prediction and then experimentally test that prediction to see if the original equation holds up. If this is done often enough, then the equation or idea will become accepted by the scientific community as a theory. A theory is a model or a representation that is either physical, like a map, or mathematical, like the equation density equals mass divided by volume that can be used to make reliable predictions. For example, for density equals mass divided by volume, if you know two of the variables, then you can easily predict what the third one will be. To get to the stage of being a theory, the concept must have undergone rigorous testing over and over and over again. Theories are designed so that they can be modified if new information becomes available, like if more precise measuring devices are developed or if you want to apply the theory to a new situation. Let me be very clear about this. There is no higher position a scientific idea can attain than that of theory. Remember that the next time someone comes along and says, oh, that's just a theory.